up ladies and gentlemen got a special guest coming up i think you're going to really appreciate and enjoy it's going to build the mind and the body you know what i mean my man just did a big thing in uh in the city 300 man march i just gave away a little clue then but i'm pretty sure you probably don't know who put it together but i'm about to introduce you to him all right transition king radio let's go Transition King Radio, we're here with a serious topic, 300 Man March, my man helped, well he actually put it together, and I'm, I'm bringing them to you, tell people who you are, introduce yourself. I am Munir Bahar, in the streets I'm known as Buddha, uh, and I am the founder and organizer of Core Fitness, and also the organizer of the 300 Men March Movement, which was created here in Baltimore City. That's what's up, man. What, 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 what made you put together this 300-man march? Because, you know, people don't like walking, all that type of stuff. You took, it, you took it back from, what is it, the 60s? Yeah. Yeah, it, people it, march. And so this is, you know what I mean, it's a new era. Young people ain't used to that. Right. So asking somebody to march from Hilton to Milton, that's big. You know what I mean? Five miles. Yeah, that's, that's huge. I was out there. So how did you think of this? And put it together. Came from the barbershop. Started with a barbershop meeting. Uh, the brother that cut my hair up on 25th Street, Sundiata, they have the barbershop um, reflection eternal. And the brother's in there pretty conscious. So, you know, at any given time when you're in there, you're going to hear some conscious conversation going on. So, uh, the Wednesday before the week of the march, uh, we were in there talking about all the violence that was taken on in Baltimore City. Um, you know, shootings and just everything and so out of talking about it <laughs> I just felt like man I got to do something because with with with, with the, the the recent you know spike in crime I'm sitting back I'm like all right who want you know where's where's NAACP where's Urban League like where are the big organizations that got all the manpower and the funding like is anybody going to do something like we just going to let all these bodies drop and I'm just you know, I, I'm the type of guy I don't wait too long for somebody else to do something if I feel I have the capacity to do it also. So I left that barbershop and I told brothers, I said, y'all gonna get 300 men to march up North Avenue. And it's like, you crazy. <laughs> no, no, no. They actually, you, you know what's funny? As, uh, and there were a lot of people in there. I, the brothers who knew me knew I was serious, mm -hmm. but there were some other guys there who were kind of chiming in the conversation. And I'm sure they probably thought this is another dude talking. But a week and two days later, we had 600 men marching 10 miles up and down North Avenue. All right, we're going to back it up a little bit. But what did you do, I mean, to put it together? Like, what was... What you okay, do? first steps was, uh, you know, actually, when I got back to my office, first person I called was Brandon Scott, um, who's uh, the councilman for 2nd District. Uh, personal friends with him, so I called him, shared my ideas, and, and and actually him inviting me to that public safety meeting that night. Everything happened for a reason, and it just so happens that the public safety meeting was that night, which you know, in which the police and other folks were down talking about it. So he invited me down there that same Wednesday night, and uh, I told you know the public, the press, and everybody, hey, I'm planning this 300 men march. This but is this what we're doing on the community on. side. Yeah. Yeah, um, I had already told a few of my brothers to make sure they was down, and then I went down there that night, and that's what I told the community. And then we hit the hell out of Facebook, you know, in the social media channels. Was the mayor there when you was sitting there? No, she wasn't there at the public safety meeting, but the commissioner was. Um, uh, his top leadership of the police department and maybe uh, a half a dozen or so council members okay. were there. So you went down there by yourself? I went down there with uh, with actually two of my uh, two of my uh, staff. Okay. So when you got the phone call back saying that you can do this 300 man march? No, bro. I didn't ask for permission. Okay. Just... I didn't get a permit. Mm -hmm. I told them this is what I'm doing. I'm getting 300 folks and we gonna march. You just said you gonna do it. You can... Yes. Okay. I didn't ask them for permission. Okay. We was gonna do it regardless because 
I mean, that's just how I feel. What 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 men need to do in the city, we need to do regardless of, of permission. Yeah, because you know, man, you we go way back. I um I didn't know that you had all this plan. Cause when I pulled up, I seen the police. And I said, oh, what's what? Y'all man, you really doing this thing? And then when I seen the man stepped up there and was announcing your name and you put this whole thing together, it, it just took my mind somewhere else. The men in our community, you know they need to hear it from you. These men that didn't have a man in the household need to hear it from you. So for on behalf of the women of Baltimore, I'll, I'll say on behalf of me as mayor, but on behalf of the women of Baltimore, I say thank you. Thank you for standing up. Standing up for your family, standing up for your community, standing up for your city, standing up for our family, the men in our community who don't know their own value, don't know that, that hope belongs to them, that better belongs to them. Thank you. Um, you plan on doing this, what, every year, every month, every two weeks? How are you going to put this 300 man? Manpower to use. It's, uh, we're actually going to go a little bit deeper. You know, that, that, that first march was a march for a symbolism. It was to, you know, to make a point, to, to send a message about the unity of brothers coming together uh, under the uh, circumstances. You know, all the violence, craziness going on, people getting shot for nothing. Girls, kids getting shot. So it's like, all right, men going to step up. We 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 came. We stood up. Uh, what we're planning now are a set of uh, strategic operations in which we mobilize that same amount of men to go out through different hot spots in the city. So it's pretty much we planning to occupy the hoods. My mother grew up without a father. We have to stop this time. And it's critically important for us to come together and make sure that we know where we're going and what direction we're in. The women have been trying to hold up our community for far too long. Once again, the women have been trying to hold up our community for far too long. How many miles and how many hours? Man, it took us about four hours and we did 10 miles all together. It was five miles up and five miles back. And what, what I kind of knew and felt was that the adrenaline and, and just the energy and the love that night was going to carry brothers forward and back. Yeah. You know, a yeah. um, few yeah, people had a little health issues, but it's like it was so monumental, especially for us that have grown up here in Baltimore, yeah. to have North Avenue shut down for us right. and to go across and back. Right. That was something... That was a, and the, the thing I noticed, it was about 300 starting, and the women was beside us. They were chaining us on platinum. But as you kept walking, there was people up. pulling over yeah. and getting out of their cars, actually stopping and parking their cars to come join us. Because I'm sure it was probably people sitting in their house like, man, ain't nobody going to march. They ain't going to do nothing. But they seen it on TV, they seen it on Facebook, and they left their house. Mm -hmm. and ran down North Avenue yeah. to come join us. They might not did the whole march, but at least they did show up. Yeah. So it turned out to be about yeah, a thousand. On, on record, we have uh, about 500 people who we know on record because we had everybody registered. Yeah, yeah. So 500. And we know there was you know, a bunch more people who joined in who didn't register, but just kind of joined in and did you know, parts of the way or whatever. Um, so we exceeded our goal. And you know it was it, it was for a show of strength. People say you you know in Baltimore people say you can't get black men together to do anything right. positive. It's like well you know shit changes. What about the people that want to uh, help you out with this you know organ organization you got going on? How can they get in contact with you or? We have planning meetings that uh, you know are communicated mostly through social media. Uh, my name Munir Bahar M U N I R B A H A R. Uh, that's my Facebook profile. So uh, just since the march, I've had maybe uh, 200 people you know uh, connect with me. So a lot more people are connecting with me using social media, Twitter, uh, and that's that's really the, the the connecting piece right there is the social media. Give out your phone number. 
Um, 410-262-2996 is my mobile number. I can be reached anytime. Uh, yeah. Commissioner, what about this number? Commissioner, what about that number? You know what goes through my mind? Some people don't understand, you know, how, how do you get to root problems? Or how do, you, how do you deal with problems? You get to the root of them. And the root of a lot of killings in Baltimore is brothers don't like each other for various reasons. So if you build a bridge to get brothers to uh, identify with each other and bond with each other more, you know, you're building a bridge to prevent future occurrences. One thing that was real big that we did a few years ago was the Raise It Up movement. And through that, we, 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 we bred so many relationships with brothers that I know have saved lives because of beefs that were thwarted because, you know, you had brothers from this crew, from this crew, and there were, there were dudes who rolled together pretty much calming things down. You know, so if we want to get to the root problem of a lot of this beef and the foolishness, you, 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 you have to really address it at the root, uh, which is building bonds between brothers. You know, when, when, when young black men see each other in public, whether they know each other or not, there needs to be a feeling of love, there needs to be a feeling of, of, of peace. And that brings the beef factor down 200%. And that's what that march was about. There were so many conversations taking place that night, so many people linking up, you know, exchanging numbers, exchanging business cards, finding out who uh, new programs, wow, you run this or you run that or you do this. So many connections were made that night. And those are the type of connections that's going to make Baltimore stronger. And, you know, for those who came out that night, we, we, we have to see ourselves as the warriors. You know, and our young brothers in the streets, uh, yeah, the, the, you know, did we get a bunch of gang members in the march? No, but it really wasn't for that. It was for the people who were conscious enough to say, yo, I'm going to walk 10 miles, and, 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 and I'm going to walk 10 miles for the victims who've been killed, for the children who've been killed, as I said at the march. You know, we wore red paint on our faces to symbolize the blood of the children who were killed in Baltimore City. That's real man shit right there. Mm -hmm. And that's what that march was intended for. Real men to come out and do something in unison. You know, so people that are twisting it up, that's because they lack the understanding of what real men do and the symbolism behind some things. It ain't always about, oh, I need a change real quick. You know, people want fast food change. They don't understand. Change ain't... Change don't come at McDonald's. It's a slow cooked meal. It's a slow process, you know. And that march is a part of that slow process because from that march, bro, we inspired thousands of people. Yeah, I was inspired. Thousands of people. Yeah, yeah. I was inspired. It was beautiful for me to see, like, wow. You had the media. You had Channel Two, Channel Thirteen. You just, you had everybody out there. You know, it was, it was powerful. Also, uh, uh, I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> I ain't Floyd Mayweather. You also a core trainer too, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, you want to jump into that a little real quick? Yeah, we uh, we do fitness training, mostly focusing on young men right now, um, focusing on mental and physical health. Um, our whole premise with core fitness training is that a man is uh, in a much better position to uh, become successful at whatever if he's healthy. You know, if he's training his mind and, and if he's training his body. So we set up a gym here. Uh, well, CORE has been around since 2007. But we set this gym up last year um, just to further, you know, the effort to get more young men healthy. We teach martial arts. So we come from a sort of a, a, a community leadership, sort of militant type of background. So you do martial arts? Yeah. See, I know him from back in the day. I ain't never seen him. What's your favorite move, man? Name one of the moves you, you do. Um, tiger grab. Tiger grip. Demonstrate that. All right, so if... Um, Don't embarrass me on camera. No, no, I ain't going to do that. Right, so, 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 so if somebody strikes, I'm going to first block it here, and then I'm going to go in to grab this wrist, and then grab the face at the same time. See, that would make me mad. That just makes me mad. That, 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 <laughs> that, right. that, Somebody get mad it? if your eye, if your fingers in the eye. Tiger grab. Tiger grip or tiger, tiger grab. grab. Yeah. Okay. So. I... <laughs> you quick. You quick. You quick. <laughs> Heard back at last. I don't want to. I don't want you. So, what's 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 the main part? Like when you when you go for like when you prepare for battle, like 
So I have to step up to you. Yo, you know like, what? Yo, I don't, I don't like you. It's actually like, the you? most the most important piece at, at that point is breathing. If you keep your breathing control, like when you know you're about to get into something, you got to keep your breathing in control. The moment you start, you know, and, and that, that your heart start hitting heavy, you lose clarity. And when you lose clarity, you lose the, the ability to make the best decision. Most important thing, if something about to jump off, is just calming your breathing down. So what's the one I approach my life? Yep, and don't say nothing. Because then they don't know how to take it. You don't matter that. Somebody get up in your face, yo, da, 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 and you just... <laughs> Pretty soon, yeah, they, yeah, gonna, yeah. they ain't gonna know like, whoa, hold on, yeah. like, am I, am I intimidating them yeah. or not? Yeah. You know, this dude seems control, yeah. and people that try to intimidate you, if you show that control, they gonna, yeah, and you, you, yeah, yeah we gonna right, talk right, later. Right, 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 cool, cool. Yeah. That's, that's what's up, man. Got the little martial arts thing going. Right now we're running a core warrior training program and that's for young men 16, 17 and up. Uh, we train on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 8 o'clock to about 9.30 and this training is for the building up of young men physically and mentally and we do the fitness training, martial arts, meditation uh, and then we also talk about community leadership. So this program is open for all young men. We don't charge. Uh, you know, this is this is sincerely just a community effort to build up some young brothers to go out and be community leaders, you know, in that neighborhood. So Tuesdays and Thursdays from 8 to 9.30 every week. Um, and if people want more information, again, they can call me, 410-262-2996. Uh, only requirements is that they are going to be committed and that they're physically able to go through the workouts. All right, cool, man. Anything else you want to say before we uh, get up out of here? Just want to uh, just send a message of peace and love to everybody. Uh, no matter what happens in life, just try not to get angry. Keep yourself calm. That's right. You can build the mind down here and the body. That's what's up, man. Appreciate you coming. Yeah, I appreciate well, your time. Transition King ready, y'all. About to wrap this up. I'm in. Get that camera out my face. <laughs>